It is the Tech Educator Podcast, episode number 44. Tonight, John Samuelson, iPad Sammy himself, takes us through the creation of digital portfolios. So sit right back and enjoy the show as we bring you... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tech Educator Podcast, coming to you live each and every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern with your hosts, Jeff Herb, John Samuelson, Sam Patterson, and Jeff Bradbury. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Tech Educator Podcast. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and thank you so much for joining us on this 44th episode. On behalf of our co-hosts, thank you. We are glad that you're here. I want to bring on my co-host tonight. We're talking all about digital portfolios, iPad Sammy himself. John, how are you tonight? I'm okay, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's been a long week, but I think we're doing well. Uh, Jeff Herb and uh, Sam Patterson, our, our normal uh, quadri of co-hosts, couldn't make it tonight. But uh, tonight you're going to be talking to us a little bit about digital portfolios. Isn't that right? I, I know. I hope I'm going to do it justice. I'm going to try my best. It's been a little while since I've stepped out of the classroom, but we did use them uh, when we when we had it. So I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite um I'm going to show you one of my favorites, and then I'm going to show you kind of a new one that's in a beta that you can check out. And then hopefully uh, Jeff Herb will follow up with his Evernotes, his digital portfolio, and one of those choices will work for some of the people that are out there to use. That's right. Uh, February here is Digital Portfolio Month. It seems <laughs> uh, we're talking a lot about how to create digital portfolios. But, you know, when we think about a portfolio, we're not really, you know, really the definition is open wide. Like a website could be a digital portfolio. A website can hold a digital portfolio. In fact, just the contents in a Google Drive or in a Dropbox, that could also be a Google a, a portfolio. And even an EduClipper could be a portfolio. Oh, yeah. But before we get into that, John, how have things been? How's everything going over there at Techlandia? Um, it's been great. We, we took the night off last night and um, I was driving back. I actually drove up to EdCamp, Oklahoma City, which was very, which very fun, very fun, just very tiring. It was 12 and a half hours round trip, six and a half hours there. So I'm a little bit uh, worn out today, but uh, very fun. So we decided to take the week off and we're what we're doing. Uh, we'll have one more show at 1030 next Saturday, uh, Central Standard Time. And then we will do a live show from IPDX uh, on Thursday at probably about seven o'clock Eastern time, maybe eight o'clock Eastern time, five, five o'clock Pacific time. So the question so, on my mind here, John, is when you were in Oklahoma, did you sing the song? Did, did did you did you drive from Texas to Oklahoma, get out of your car and say, oh, what a beautiful morn? I mean, were, were you in the mood? I did a, more of a Surrey with the fringe on top, That's from a good like uh, Billy Crystal from When Harry Met Sally. But um, I, I rented a car, actually. So uh, it was nice because I had some XM satellite radio and I was I was trying to blog about it earlier in the day. I will probably have to do it now after the show tonight. But uh, I did make my playlist from I love that XM satellite radio. I have to say the throwback rap station is right in my wheelhouse from my teenage years. And uh, I got to tell you, I've been using XM now for about six years or so. I've actually gone through three Priuses. Uh, Pri-I, 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 um, hybrid cars through, uh, through XM. I'm, I'm a, I'm a major, major fan of like the, of all that stuff. And you know, with all the, it's at 70 miles to drive one way to work and between the oh. Philadelphia and the New York markets, you do lose stations. Um, luckily I don't have to do any of those New York sports stations. Cause you know, I like to listen to my Eagles talk, but um, what, what do you listen to on XM? This is a well, this all right. Is a, so on, yeah, on so one a commercial. I, I I have not um I have not used XM that much because I have old cars. That, I mean, my cars that I buy might as well have cassette players in them or eight track players. Um, I really liked Channel Forty Six, which is their. It's like a rewind rap channel. So it's I think it's I forget what it's called, but it, I know the station was Forty Six. And then I really like the other one I like is Lithium, which is like the '90s alternative rock. And they had the Pearl Jam channel. And the Pearl Jam channel, I thought, was going to be like, you know, I'd know all the songs. But every time I went there, I guess Pearl Jam has done so much live music mm -hmm. that they were just I, – I didn't know a lot of them. And then I, I always go way back and kick it with the 70s on 7. 
so because you, I'm I'm a child of the '70s, so it kind of that throws me back pre-teenage years then into the '70s. See, I was a '70s kid. I, I was a Carter kid. What are we talking about? Digital portfolios. <laughs> <laughs> We have to fill in for Waka. We I mean, have to if fill Waka's in for... not here, we have to fill in with something. So bring on the babies. No, not yet. I will save them. It, it has been a busy week with the babies. It was our first full week together, and um, I haven't slept since. I I, I I I texted you guys earlier this, but it was like the yeah. Batman movie of of. I, I just see the next couple of weeks, the appearances here, just less less caring about things like showering and shaving. It, it, it it's 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 ridiculous now you're right now you know that's why i show up that's why i show up every sunday i don't shave or shower until i possibly have to on monday be seen in public and right i, I thought it was funny when you texted about like schedules and you're like we're gonna try and keep the babies on a schedule and i'm like no they're gonna run you guys they're running you right now well you're on their schedule i hope everybody out there watching enjoyed that little trailer uh little robert slept, slept next to us today on our memory phone for about five hours and I did all that with one hand. It was the first time I used the new iMovie since it updated, like, in November. It's amazing how much, like, Final Cut they're making it. I mean, it really is Final Cut Lite. Or maybe it's Final Cut as iMovie Pro. Um, let me ask you guys out there. I know we have a very healthy audience over on TeacherCast.tv. We're looking at doing a show on Final Cut Pro. If that's something that you're interested in, please give a shout out on the chat. Um, we're a little bit delayed tonight, John. So we're going to try to take all of your calls, but uh, we're using the hashtag Tech Educator tonight. Of course, you can find all of our great stuff happening over at our website, TechEducatorPodcast.com, where you can find all of our amazing blog posts. And um, John... What do you got for us today? All right. Well, let's go ahead and I will screen share. Okay. Now, like I say before, when I do, when I talk to people on Google Hangouts, don't judge me by my desktop because my desktop is very not organized. Well, I can see from the back of your board if, if it's as organized as that whiteboard. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's right. Good. Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and screen share on out. Let's put up the tab. Well, while you're doing that, let me ask you, what is a digital portfolio and, and, and why would we want to use one? Okay, so to me, when I, I mean, when I first used, um, when I first used a digital portfolio, when I first saw kind of the app come out, Three Ring, a couple years back when I had um, students, I always kind of thought like, there's work that I'm going to want to save from the students that I might want to show at conferences along the way, or just kind of look back on and see if they're growing as students. And um, I usually would keep them in file folders, and I'd have them in you know, my desk drawer and you'd tab them and you'd make the little tabs and things like that. So um, when the thought of digital portfolios came out, um, me being kind of a, a person that likes to use my my iPhone or my iPad or whatever, I thought, okay, well, this will be a better system for me because I can get a handle on it. And then I don't have to like take a bunch of papers and file them away. This will do it for me automatically. And I think the idea of having a digital portfolio now, it makes it easier to go along and use it year to year and for you to pass it to your teacher, basically, the teacher that would be with them next year. Now, what's the difference between a portfolio and a resume? And, and talk to me in adult terms, not student terms at this point. I think I look at portfolio, you know, um, in elementary, um, I think a lot of times we get kind of treated a little bit with um, – I don't want to, I don't want to say like, there's something about elementary teachers that people think they have to manage. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Principals think they have to manage elementary teachers a little bit more. And so what you want to do is I want to make sure that if I'm build, if I, if there's a problem with a student that maybe a portfolio of their work where you can show the growth and take little uh, snippets here and there, kind of like you were saying with EduClipper, but take a, take a little snippet of their work as we go along, you should be able to see the progress that's going along so that maybe it's proof that I'm doing my job. Maybe it's something if in case the student has to be, uh, have an IEP or something like that. And so that's, I think of a digital resume kind of more as like my Visify that's online, you know, that little infographic thing that, that goes on there. So I, I think of a portfolio more as the teacher kind of, keeping track of their students. And a lot of times there are things you can't remember, but if you save little snippets of their work, it kind of goes, okay, I need to work on this with this student. Or maybe if something happens, it might be proof back and you can say to the parent and say, or the principal and say, this is 
this is the work that we've done so far. This is what I've been trying to accomplish. So maybe a little bit of um, covering yourself, covering your bases. So what we're going to do tonight is John's going to show off some of the great online portfolios, and then we're going to come back together and we're going to take your questions as you get them. And again, I know we're a little bit delayed today, but you know I've got some questions for you later on in the show, such as how do you do a portfolio from, say, the elementary schools through the high schools and not have kids stuff get lost? And also a question for you is what happens when the kid moves? Right. But first of all, show me what you got there, John. Okay. So on my screen, I'm sorry. So here, I'm going to do shameless plug real quick one more time. And I think you could probably use Apollo, but live slide, if you remember, we did that show a, a month ago Certainly. or a month and a half ago. So I just wanted to throw out there that Apollo is actually the updated version of live slide now. And if you look at this, you can actually see that there are some portfolio-like aspects to it. So I just want to throw out there, if anybody would like to learn more about Apollo, that iPad Sammy is the man to get a hold of, and I can help you walk you through whatever you want. That is a shameless plug. I work for them. Now, onto a company I don't work for. Can you maximize Free your screen? Ring. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Can you see it now? Uh, yes. Wonderful. Okay, good. All right, so on this one, so the first one I'm going to talk about is Three Ring, and it's just simply, as you can see from my uh, uh, URL, it's just threering.com. And I have Reflector on so that I can hopefully show you a little bit later on uh, how that it goes through. Now, for me, Three Ring personally has been um, something that I, I used, but of course, I, I went through and I had some of the students um, from two years ago, I kept some uh, stuff from them, but I don't want to show their things. So I went through and created a class. And so um, I want to say, first of all, that the uh, one of the people from Three Ring contacted me when they heard that we were, were going to do this tonight. And they were talked on the phone with me for about 20 to 25 minutes, which I thought was very uh, nice of them. They just wanted, I just wanted to make sure that we did them some justice. So the first thing you're going to notice is, and I have to say that I'll show you on the iPad um, that the app looks very similar to what you're seeing right now on my uh, iMac. So you're going to go into your settings first. And remember that your gear button is always your settings. And you're going to hit your manage classes button. And this is how you build. So on this one, you can see that I built my Samuelson class, which is just going to be my four students, which are all of my kids. Uh, Jeff is now just one behind me. And we're going to hit the create button. And this is how easy it is to make a class. So if we wanted to say, let's do a teacher cast portfolio, it's all it is is you put in whatever class title you want. And then look, you can just copy and paste your roster right there, one student per line. So we can go Jeff, Jeff B, Jeff H, John. I'm trying to do it in order. And is this and something Sam. that you can do 100 students at a time? Or is this really just yeah, mean 30 so kid class? That, I, I think that you can do a hundred, you can make the class as large as you would like. And I think that one of the things that's nice is if you do have a class roster right there or something, you could actually just paste it right in and save. And then voila, you've got your class and see how that pops up already. And then you've got your four students in your class and you can, it's as easy to change if we just wanted to do some different changes on the fly, it's pretty simple to go ahead and change. So what you're saying is if I class. happen to have one more kid this year, I can easily just add that to my class? Yeah, it's very simple to just to add your kids into your class. And you would just go into the next tab, which is then your manage students. Now this one gets a little bit trickier, but if you look at um, some of the things that you have here, it does have the ability for you to go ahead and add in a, an email if you wanted to. And you can go ahead and send some of those things to the student if you would like to or to the parent. And I think that that's one of the things that I like about it then. So actually, if you had something that was really nice in class and you wanted to capture it, you could actually just go ahead and say, oh, you know what? I'd like to share this with the parent, too. So they have some sharing options. And of course, you can have the option where it's completely private as well. But um, one of the things that you would have to do is just, you know, enter in the so if you had, you know, it'd be a simple copy and paste into the parent email. I don't think that there's any other way to do that besides just copying and pasting in. And over here on this bar, you can see that if you hit that little arrow, you can see now that teacher cast is one of my new classes that's there. And that's basically all that little shelf is for just in case you want to go to your different classes that are there. So, so far, it's pretty simple with those managing of the students. Now, as far as going in for adjusting the different things, um, your settings, the, your settings, you can just go ahead and you can do one where you can share all new posts with students and you can share all new posts with parents. And it says also that you can, that's your default setting. You can also hit that so that that doesn't happen. 
and then when you want to go ahead and share something, that that's completely your choice, your call. And so that's pretty much the way that you would go in and do those kinds of things. And the uh, archive feed is just if you want to go ahead. I haven't used the archive feed, but let's say we want to go in and let's start posting some things. So I had some samples real quick for you. All right, so this is now turned into the Edu Baby podcast. Okay, so shameless plugs here. I went through and I just thought, okay, so here's the student. If you want to hit the student, it's Adam. So there's Adam Samuelson, and you can go in and you can see how you can edit the different things. So let's say right here, the first thing that it defaults to is it shows you the date that you captured something. So you can see that I just did that before we came on the air. I could switch if I wanted to go ahead and switch the students in that class. And there also you have also the ability to make tags for things, which is something that I know that people um, I don't take advantage of, but I should start tagging things a little bit more. It's a good way to organize your files. And so you do have the ability once you've uploaded something to edit some different things out. So now, I now John, think, I, I will ahead. say, looking at this, it does look very much Evernote-ish, right? You have a document, and you put the document in here. You're not actually using this like a blog or a website to type a report. Am I getting the right idea for this? Yeah, you're, no, no, and you're getting the right idea. And we, I, you know what? I talked with some people at EdCamp OKC last week. I have to, or yesterday at EdCamp did, OKC. Did, did, I'll, I'll ask again. Did you break out in song while you were talking to them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, did, I didn't do that. I, I don't know. Uh, I didn't. Th I didn't that time. We were just actually discussing things. And um, please tell me well, that somewhere in there you sang, "I'm just a girl that can't say no." No, I didn't, I didn't do that. I'm not as school. I'm not as schooled on the music. I'm schooled on more of the the old school hip hop. I'm not as schooled in the uh, the performances as you are. So no no poor no poor Judd is dead and nothing like that. No no just I, all I know from Oklahoma is Surrey with the fringe on top. My wife would know a lot more. I'll, I'll and, say, um, I have an Oklahoma story when you're finished, but I'll let okay. you go. All right. So um, when we were talking about things, I mean a portfolio. I mean. Literally, it can, I mean, it can probably be whatever tool is easiest for you. I just know that the two that I'm going to show you right here are actual websites that deal with teachers and students sharing digital kind of portfolios. And so they're aimed at the education market. The other one that I have up in my tabs, the Bulb app, was at the Texas conference. And I just happened to walk by them and see that, or else I wouldn't have even known about them. So these two sites are actually marketing to teachers. Now, I've seen a lot of things um, on Evernote, and I think Evernote's great. But remember, I think when you're dealing with Evernote, you're also dealing, they're not just looking at teachers. Whereas these two companies, uh, Bulb and Three Ring, I think are just are have educators in mind, basically. Um, but I think a portfolio could be a, a something as simple as a Weebly that you could put up there. It could be a Google site. It could be a blog. Um, there are so many ways to track things now with the digital world that we live in. Um, so I think that these are a couple ways, but right. So this looks Evernote-ish. But I, I think that when you look at this one, you can see up here, even in the ta in the search box, you can search by student class or tag. So they're marketing towards students, whereas Evernote won't do that. You know, Evernote's for businesses and all sorts of different things. And if I type in Michael, then you can see that Michael will pop up and we can go over to his blog where he has nothing. So I'll show you how to make a post in this one. And I think for this, I will go ahead and I will actually exit out of this. And I will show you my number. One. Jeff, would you like me to use the the? Would you like me to mirror the iPad probably better than the phone? Yeah, that, I think that would that be great. Sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Craig says yes. So, okay, iPad instead of phone. After all, all right. you are iPad Sammy. <laughs> yeah, I am iPad Sammy. Okay. Can you see that one if I put that up? Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. I'm gonna focus right. right here on your screen, but uh, but actually, while I'm doing this, could you sing me a chorus or two? No, no, never Ducks mind. Ducks in. <laughs> okay. All right. So now this is my iPad that's right next to me. And um, it's, I mean, you can see that a lot of the, the features on it look pretty similar. I'm hoping that it's going to kick in and actually mirror here. Okay. Let me go up one more time. I can see it mirroring, but I can't see it moving on there. Why is it not moving? Okay. Hold on. You can't see any movement, right? Uh-oh. I yet. hope I didn't overload my computer. Uh -oh. All right. Let's see. Too many kids. Too many, too many things. All right, come on, come on, reflector. Okay. Uh, there we, have a, we do have some questions. It says, "Is sure. Apollo a learning management system or an e-portfolio tool?" 
<laughs> hey, I don't know who asked that question, but thanks. Um, we at Atlas Learning actually have a learning management system that is called Homeroom, but it is not a learning management system. It is a way for you to share and interact with students in a digital way. So you can take static presentations and you can make them dynamic. And like I said before, just like we showed before about uh, five or six weeks ago, with Apollo, you can I can be sitting in my office in Austin, I can annotate on some slides, and then I can give control to someone as far away as Australia or Africa, and I can give them control, and they can annotate, and I can see what they're doing as well. So, and uh, it has, you know, some different assessment tools, so you can get some formative assessment on the fly. Students can take notes, and the new feature that we, we added for Apollo is, now not only can you have video replay of Let's say you do a nice math problem, but you can a teacher can also include audio so that the students can go back and whatever device they're on, log into their Atlas Learning account, and they can review all the stuff that's on there. So it's a pretty cool thing. It's so unique. It's Jeff, it takes about a billion different apps, or I'll say at least five or six different really cool apps, and combines them into one kind of neat little package. And I really want people to use it, so just get a hold of me. And I will be happy to Google Hangout or whatever with people if they would like. All right. Well, let's see, Jeff. It's really being difficult because while the, I was talking there, I was still trying to get it going. But it is not going to do this, I don't think. So I'm going to switch back and go like this. Okay. So I'm going to go to a new post. I'm going to select the class. I'm going to select the person. So let's give Michael one. And let's just say I want something. Let's say I found some reading for him. I'm going to choose file. So now this is just if I'm on some different things that are, you know, uh, there. So let's say I have, let's say I have this real quick and I want to put up an EPUB or whatever. So that's as simple as it gets. I will go ahead and choose my file. The class is there. I could switch to the to the teacher cast podcast and switch over if I wanted to. And I probably have to uncheck those first, and then I could switch over and grab those. Oh, it's not moving. But um, I can go and I can save it and then it will go ahead and populate in. Let me try one more time. I'm trying desperately to fix my reflector, so let me try it one more time. It's a live show, John. No, no worries. I know it is. I know it is. Craig, know Craig Yen is, 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 is asking questions here about this. He wants okay. to see it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Craig. Tell me. Well, lay it on me. Well, well, he's six minutes behind. Hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so let me see now. There we go. Okay, so it's kind of working. Could you have that one, Jeff? Yes. Okay, so good. All right. Oh, and then it – okay, it is kind of working. Okay, so I'm going to hit the new post. I like to do this for my iPhone, actually. That's why. Okay, so I'm going to hit new post, and then hopefully – I think I've got too much stuff working. What is going on with my stuff? You can see me hitting new post right there. Okay, I'm going to switch one more time. Let me hit it for you. Okay. Yeah, hit that for me real quick. Right there. There. Okay. There. Nope, didn't work. All right, let me try some, one other thing. Click this button. Tweak the All right. Airport mode. I am just not having luck. You know what? And the funny thing is, just like I tested it out right before. Okay, can you see my iPhone now, which seems to be responding a lot better? You know, there's a, it, Waka hasn't chimed in yet, and you're having problems. I know. That's awesome. Thanks, Waka. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Now, one of the things, to, can you see my iPhone, which is actually responding to things? Oh, and now it's not. Okay, there it is. It is. Okay. So on this one, one of the things that they told me to go ahead and show you was there's that little icon up in the top where you can go back and you can you can just hit the capture button and then you just go through and I'm going to choose Samuelson class. I'm going to choose Michael and or I can see how easy it is to add a new student right there, Jeff, because yep. you just hit that plus button. Yep. I can hit the tag and now here are the buttons that are on the bottom. So if I hit the bottom left button, I can select for my camera roll, which will go to my photo library. Okay, let's see if I can find one. Oh, here, let's do this one. I'll get Kenya 75. I'll just act like she's Michael. And then so you see what happened right there. On the, There's a little notification that said that is queued up to go ahead and upload to Michael's thing, uh, portfolio. And then once it goes through and kicks in, it'll say it's already uploaded. If I hit the little video, Obviously, I can take a video right there. Now you can see what I'm seeing, and I can cancel it out. 
or you can hit a video that's there. It also allows you to take a picture if you hit the middle one. So I can hit take a picture so I can do this live right there. I don't have to have the images on my phone. I can hit the pencil button and I can type in a little note. And then I can hit, oops, and then I can hit submit. And then that will go ahead and upload. And of course, now my phone is not respond. My AirPlay is not responding. So this, this and, again, is this app for teachers and students, or is this just the teacher side of the app? Or, well, you know what I think. You know what I think is funny, Jeff, is that I think that when we started using this one, when we started using this app, I think, and I'm going to just give up on Reflector because it totally kicked off there. But um, I think that what we did was we basically went through, and I th thought, why should why should I as a teacher have total autonomy over what gets in their folders? I think that that's the way I used to do it. I used to think, okay, this is a really good story. This is what I, this is what I want to show. Now I think as a, if you can get students involved with this, the students can actually choose and they, they could come up to me and they could go, Hey, Mr. Samuelson, you know what? I really like this story. Can I add it to my portfolio? And then students can have some more choice in what's going instead of me. Cause what it used to be is I would give a writing assessment. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're way too focused on testing. I mean, I'm not telling anybody anything, but so, you know, the writing samples that I would take a lot of times would be in fourth grade in Texas would be their writing prompts from the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, and right before we would take the test when we would practice up. And that's not really a good way. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a measure, but it shouldn't be the only measure. And I think that that's the way I used to, I think I was just so done with portfolios that I would just be like, okay, I got to put this in the portfolio and make sure I'm, you know, covering myself so I can pass it on to the teachers next year. And I think what these digital things actually open up to you is students can have a say and actually build it and go along and share it with their parents or share it with, you know, some different things. Um, I think it's, I think it's really cool opportunities that, that open up for these, for these different things. Why don't you get off screencast for a little bit? Um, let me ask okay. a couple of questions here that are coming up. What is the role of the parents in all of this stuff? I mean, okay, it's one thing for a teacher to build a portfolio with their students, and it's one thing to start putting things in there. But but where do you see this going? Let's say that we you know we started today, and I'm a fifth grade teacher, and I start a portfolio with my kids. Next year they go into the middle school. Is that wasted time? Is that wasted space? Do all of those digital things go away? Why can't we just use a big, huge Google Drive? Because that's what the kids are using anyway. I think that I think you've got. I think you bring up a valid point. I think that Google Drive would be a good, uh, another good tool to use because we talked about using Google Sites. I think that it's probably going to be whatever the teacher is comfortable with. I think that a big Google Drive would be a great option. And I have to say. Out of all the apps that I use, I think that the one that I use the most is Google Drive. Probably Google Drive and Dropbox as a person that's out of education right now. Those are the two things that I use the most because I transfer computers and I move around so much. And I think that it's great for students to learn those things. But I think that if you did three ring and you were in contact with teachers or you gave the students control of the, you know, after the year was over, um, you might be able to go. I think that's probably one of the things that you could ship over to them. Then I think it gives you, I'm a big fan right now and I've used it a little bit and I, maybe it's cause I'm out of education, Jeff, but um, transparency. And I, I really, I always talk about how Tim Lauer up in Portland, an administrator is very transparent and shares a lot of stuff on, you know, Instagram and things like that and great pictures. I think if teachers, I always think that parents appreciate if you're like, this is their portfolio. Why don't you take a look at their work and then let's have an honest conversation about that. Instead of always, a, a lot of schools where I worked at that were title one view the teacher as someone that is, you know, they, they don't view them as an ally. And I think that really what you want to do is you want to work with parents to get the best results for students. And I think this, this helps open the conversation a little bit. Now, is this something that you really should rely on the school district to do or as students are making digital things, even when they come home with their little macaroni turkeys and stuff, can't parents just start a digital portfolio for the kids? I mean, my goodness, my kids already have about 2,500 pictures up online. Why can't <laughs> we start doing this? I mean, my, my thought was I want to turn the baby blog eventually into their online resume, you know, and, and just to see how they're doing and see. It doesn't take that much for me to take a picture of their hand turkey and, and, and run with it. 
mm-hmm. because I- you know at the end of the day 12th grade is going to come a are they really going to care about what what they did in fifth grade and b how do they get their stuff out to use it in their college resumes and c what's the point after if no one's going to use it <laughs> right well you know what i think as um i think that you're when I talked with the, the person from Three Ring, when I talked with him, I told him that, you know, we went over my background and I told him that I used to use it in the classroom. That's why I made the Samuelson class, because I really wanted to start taking a digital portfolio and keeping some of those memories for myself. And I think it would be I think it would be interesting for kids to look back on their work and see what they were doing and maybe see what they need to focus on. I remember one of the funniest things I ever did was when I took my my job teaching for the first time. I went to my old, I actually got where I started kindergarten. That was the first place that I started back teaching. And one of the ladies that I worked with said, well, I remember you, little John Samuelson. And I was like, oh, uh oh, this is going to be bad news. And she said, this is really funny, but I just wanted to share this with you from your yearbook. And it was some poem that I had written in like second grade. And I looked back at it as, you know, a uh, you know, a 24 year old adult. And I thought it was so hilarious. And I thought, wow, that was just a, an interesting little snapshot. And I think that kids might look, be able to look back and appreciate that. The, the poem that I wrote was really, really strange. I have to say it was like about a deer being shot, (laughs) something that, something that obviously affected me when I was little, but I had no memory of it. I thought, wow, that might give me some, in- I mean, I think it's cool. I know as the parent, you're taking a lot of pictures. I think it would be, they're going to grow up, Jeff, a lot faster than you're ready for. And, you know, I, I want to save some of their, their work just even for me to look back on. I think that that would be a great thing, but I think also for them too, to kind of reflect on. Talking about digital portfolios today, John, what, do you look for as a parent or even as an educator in this digital portfolio? I mean, free versus not free, um, iPad happy versus not iPad happy. I mean, what what are we looking for when we're going up making these choices as school districts? Okay. I do want to say that three ring is a free service right now. And it does have a nice app uh, for the iPad and iPhone that works really well and convenient for, for, what I do. And they also just created an Android app. And that was one of the other things that he wanted me to say. So it does work across platforms. Now, if you wanted me to show the second one, which is the bulb app, and I don't know as much about this one, but I can give you a little bit of a different um, perspective on on this. And um, uh, the bulb app is going to, uh, they are going to have a paid version for teachers and it's going to be like a yearly fee kind of thing. Um, It looks a lot different, but um, I don't know. I mean, I think that schools want to think of security too. I mean, I think, I mean, schools always think that way. So, I mean, as far as you can share, you can share all the stuff on three ring, or you could totally just keep it for the school. And I always thought it was the teacher's responsibility, no matter where I've taught to, um, you know, keep the digital portfolio. Like we had to pass those folders to the next year teacher. And ha- I don't know what they would do with them. And I remember I would get past them. And I'd, I'd look through them a little bit, but I always kind of wanted to make my own judgment as a teacher because I'm a wise guy like that and I fuck right. the system. But um, yeah, do you want me to show Bulb app real quick? Sure. Okay, so I just have – and really for this one, there is no app for this. So um, I'll go ahead and swing on over. And this is what mine looks like a little bit. Um, I made some different, uh, this is what mine did. Look, I put us in there, Jeff, tech educator. So, um, on this one, I kind of tried to upload the same type of pictures. And so one of the things that I think that is different about this one is obviously the layout and you can see that it's in a beta, so they're testing it out, but, um, it has some different features on this one. You can see that your sharing features include social networking, which I think is an interesting kind of concept. I, I don't know. If that is, I mean, so I think that when you're talking about um, digital portfolio for yourself as a resume, I think that this one probably lends a little bit more to it because I see the old LinkedIn button right there, or here I can email this, and these are some of my lessons as a teacher. I think that that's kind of an interesting concept. So this one was a page that I did for Adam, and if you go ahead and hit the create button right here, you can either create collections or you can create pages. And the pages can have videos. Now, I didn't publish Gwen's, 
but so on Gwen, this is like her little cover and I don't like how it kind of cut off there. I must, uh, must not have done that right. But now I, I've created a collection for her and you can see my choices. I can add a video, I can add some text down there. It gives me some text options. I can add an image and some different things like that. So it's kind of like a different thing. And this one isn't published yet. So as long as this one is unpublished, that's kind of um, the different things that um, you can do with this. Now I'm gonna quit from mine and I'm gonna show two different ones. So these are what they send you when you sign up for it. And uh, this is an art teacher. So this is his digital design portfolio. And so look, if you look at his propaganda project, which looks like a page to me, you can see that he put in a whole bunch of different things. He almost put in like a lesson plan, like a recipe overview. He put in some graphics. He put in the steps for his lesson. And it's got some cool stuff in there. He's got some interpretation things. So this is basically like the guy's lesson plans, you know, and he's got his reflective questioning and all these different things. And so I think that if you wanted to go through and say, okay, well, this is me as a person, you know, this is me as an art teacher. Now you could hit the share button and then you could go ahead and share that with the different jobs that you have. And so he's got the digital design one. He's got uh, the squares project, which I haven't looked through, but let's see what that looks like. And yeah, look, I mean, to me, it looks just kind of like lesson plans. So that's an interesting way to use it. And that's, so that's more of a teacher driven one than a student driven one. Now, the other one that they show is a uh, one that's from a TED talk person. So you know how those TED talk people are, they're all deep thinkers. But um, if you click one of these, so a futuristic tale of fantasy and desire. And so look, he's got his videos embedded in there. He's got some different things that are in there. He's got some screen caps, a plot summary. I mean, look at how nice this looks. I mean, this one looks really visually a lot nicer than Three Ring. I think that just with Three Ring, it just, uh, with the app, it just kind of lends more for students. And I think that this might be more of one for your personal, like like you were saying before, like your resume. Like here's this interview. And this is the guy that it, that is his, the director. And I mean, I think that this stuff just looks really cool. It kind of makes me want to look through and see the movie. So um, that's those are the two ones that they, those are the two examples that they use with the, the thing. So he's kind of got a cover image and this is like his collection. And you see people can like it. And, um, you know, it's got some different, different things and it look okay so I haven't even seen that but so it looks like you've got some groups and some different things so bulb might be one you know when people are first checking things out that's always a, a good thing to um, you know get in on early is check out the different things that go on with um, with uh, the new um, stuff that's out there you know John I noticed that you did say that you spoke to them on the phone or you, you spoke to three ring on the phone this week right I did. Um, three ring. Um, I just, and this is what I, I mean. This is, I think something that I've, I've kind of learned as I, I, I go along a little bit. Um, I think that when you're, when you're going through and like I said, we don't, we don't work for, we're just trying to show tools that we think will help teachers and give you a little bit of a background. And I know you can contact Jeff Bradbury or myself and we would, we would help you through if you needed more help always on Twitter. That's the way we are. Um, so if digital portfolios are something that's that you're looking for, you know, you can contact us. But um, I just I they, they have they both have Twitter accounts. And so I just direct message them and said, we're going to do this show and we're going to talk a little bit about your product. Is there anything you want me to share? Uh, Three Ring uh, said, can I call you at two o'clock? And I said, sure. So I called and talked to them for about 20 minutes. They were very nice. And uh I think Bulb, I, I can understand working for a startup, Bulb is a little bit smaller. And they said, well, here are some examples. And I said, I know that I got that for your examples. Is there anything else? And she emailed me a nice note as well. So they're very um, in tune with what's going on. So I think that don't ever be scared as an educator to reach out to the, when you have questions like that, Haiku Deck and Symbol are some of the best examples yeah. of those. Like uh, for me, they always, whenever I ask them for things, it's always, they are always very responsive and nice. And it like, especially if you have presented on some of those things, it's always good. Or like, you're like, you're even at a uh, staff development, you're going to show off something. I don't think it hurts just to tell them that you're, you're sharing their stuff and maybe get a little extra information from them so that you give the whole picture. Nice. And, and, and I, I do find, you know, that's how we get a lot of our guests here on teacher cast is you just reach out to these people and 
they just want to get their product out there. They just want to make sure that the information that you're giving is the right information. And especially if you're going to be taking it to your school district, they want to make sure that everything that you're saying to them is accurate and, and is, is doable out there. It is. It's, it's a good thing. And so I liked, I appreciate three ring for giving me their time. I told them that I had been presenting on them for about two years now when I've been using the, their system with my uh, class. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I uh, like I said, the bulb app is just, they're just new. It's, and I feel for them just like for Apollo, Apollo, if you ever had any questions on that, you can always just ask. And, and I try and get back to people as quickly as I can and help them. And I just want people to use Apollo. That's my whole goal of life right now. Well, let's change that. And, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, or one of my other goals of life is to make sure that the children uh, have their needs met. Right. So, uh Oh, are we going to have another appearance? My, my, my children are not having their <laughs> needs met. <laughs> they might, they might be able to, but, um, you know, sometimes with those babies, they're not as reasonable as like the fourth graders with my fourth grader. I can just go, Go do that. How you know, I, I want to transition to next week a little bit because we are having okay. a, a, our, our Evernote for advanced users. And we did talk about Evernote in the first half of this school year and basically went over the, the basic stuff. And, you know, I know next week Jeff's going to come on and do really like those brand new advanced features. I'm still not seeing that tool, though, that a third fourth and fifth grader can use into the older grades um kid blog which i love has a feature where a class can get passed on to the next year and the next year and they're actually making it from a classroom blog to a district level blog where you can actually take the so a kid could have a series of blog posts from fifth grade up until high school i'm still not seeing that is, is that the idea i mean are where do you see all this? I mean, I think that that would be the idea. And that's why I think what you said about Google Drive might be a valid point because it might be easier to go ahead and share. I think that the archive feature on Three Ring lets you go ahead and export that if you wanted to. So if you wanted to pass on the information for them. But uh, Three Ring would be kind of more of a, like, uh, that's my account. And I created my students in those accounts. And um, I'm not absolutely sure if you can pass off and say, okay, now, Michael, this is your account, and you can take control of it. I'm not sure. Now, with Evernote, I think that there is that opportunity because they would create their own Evernote accounts, and if they had, like, let's say, Skitch automatically uploads to Evernote now, they could keep track of some different things and bring it um, from year to year with them. So I think that, you know, I think that the, it's getting there, but... um yeah, I think that people are just trying to figure all this, you know, these things out. And uh, somebody was saying to me at EdCamp Oklahoma City, and they were like, well, geez, you know, I've only been using the iPads, you know, in the classroom for two years. And I said, well, yeah. And I said, you, I, and I said, and people that started using it the first day it came in the classroom, like myself, have been using it for a whole three years. I mean, it's just pretty much new, right? Is it the third anniversary of the iPad, Jeff, or is it the fourth when the, uh, coming up here? I don't know, but um, it hasn't been around. It hasn't been around that long. They're going to be coming out with the, they have the fifth generation, which is the iPad Air. But so tech... maybe it's its fourth. Maybe it's the fourth year of the iPad. Right. And so I bought mine four years ago. So I mean, really, if, you don't have to feel bad as an educator yeah. if you're like, oh my gosh, I've only been you know trying to you know integrate these iPads for a year. At best, people have been trying to do it for four years. So I still don't think we have these things figured out yet. But I think that we will. And I think that Evernote is a great tool. And I think I think that's what you try and present. You've got Jeff Herb, who knows a lot about Evernote. And I, I like what I like about Three Ring is I can take video on my iPhone. I can take audio on my iPhone. I can take a screenshot real quick. And there are some things in there. And that's what you want to do. You want to get like, um, you know, you want to get a good solid picture. And you would use all those different medium to to make your, to get your uh, solid picture of their school year. And I think that we'll get there eventually, but right now, right. I think it's whatever tool you're comfortable with. Well, oh, right we now I, I have a comfortable it. tool <laughs> and I want to introduce to the show. Say hello. This is, this, it, it's, it's kind of like your, your Lion King moment. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have access to our feet yet, but this is Robert. Say hello. Hey, Robert. And Robert was just screaming his head off like his sister is right now. But Robert oh is goodness. the star of our Edu Triplets video. 
because he's the oldest. Say hello. Uh, so Robert is officially the oldest. Robert is the oldest by less than a minute. Wow, Robert. That's yeah. a lot of – I hope you were learning in that minute. Yes. <laughs> yes <laughs> Lifelong learner. But uh, Robert, um, we're, we're celebrating a, a big moment because yesterday, John, yesterday okay. was their due date. Oh, so you know, that's you, so you, great. you know what I've been through so early, and we've been through fifteen weeks together. Three, three. Whoa, there goes the head. Three, <laughs> three months and a week or so, and uh, we are doing amazing here. And so is his brother, and so is his sister, as you can hear in the other room. But uh, yeah, please join us in for. Uh, we're we're going to wrap it up a little bit now because um, I guess we've had a lot of delays in here, John. And so if you check out some of the chat in here, we'll go through. But uh, next week, please join us for another great Tech Educator podcast where we're going to be discussing Evernote. Say hello, Robert. Hello. Good. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, we will be with you next week. Again, join us on techeducatorpodcast.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube at techeducatorpodcast.com slash YouTube. For John Samuelson, John, where can we find you? You can find me. I'm trying to spiff up iPadSammy.com, but you can always just reach out to me at iPadSammy on Twitter. I'll be happy to uh, talk to you. In fact, I would like to. I'm I'm lonely. I don't have a I don't have Robert. I just have me. Robert Aww. says follow the Edu triplets. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will see you guys next week. <laughs>